In this week in military history, we explore the Cuban Missile Crisis and how close the 13-day confrontation came to a global nuclear conflict. In July of 1962, revolutionary leader Fidel Castro brokered a secret deal with Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev to place Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba following the failed Bay of Pigs invasion. Despite President Kennedy's warnings, construction of missile sites began in the late summer. On October 14th, an American U-2 spy plane photographed a Soviet SS-4 medium-range ballistic missile being assembled for installation. On October 22nd, President John F. Kennedy notified Americans about the presence of the missiles during a television address while explaining his decision to enact a naval blockade around Cuba, making it clear that the U.S. was prepared to use military force to neutralize this perceived threat if necessary. The same day, Kennedy sent a letter to Khrushchev demanding that the Soviets disassemble their missile bases already under construction. He declared that the United States would not allow offensive weapons to be delivered to Cuba and required the return of all such weapons to the USSR. US naval forces began to implement the quarantine and accelerate their plans for military strikes. On October 24th, Khrushchev responded to Kennedy's letter stating that the blockade was an act of aggression and that the ships bound for Cuba would be ordered to continue. Regardless, on the 24th and the 25th, a number of ships turned back from the quarantine zone as US reconnaissance flights over Cuba indicated the Soviet missile sites were nearing operational readiness. With no end in sight, US forces moved to DEFCON 2. On October 26th, Kennedy put his hopes in diplomatic methods and hoped that that could resolve the struggle. Later that afternoon, a Soviet agent approached an ABC News correspondent with the message that an agreement could be made. The same evening, Khrushchev's message to Kennedy alluded to the doom of a thermonuclear war and proposed a resolution remarkably similar to the back-channel offer that White House staff was scrambling to verify. On October 27th, however, a US U-2 reconnaissance plane was shot down over Cuba. Kennedy and his advisors prepared for an attack as they searched for any remaining diplomatic resolution. On October 28th, Khrushchev ordered a public statement that Soviet missiles would be dismantled and removed from Cuba. Despite the crisis coming to an end, the naval quarantine of the island continued until November 20th, 1962. Join us next time for another segment of This Week in Military History with the Pritzker Military Museum and Library.